Welcome, Eliza, to the Regional Football Hub. It's a pleasure having you on today. Um, we always start with a few quick questions that may or may not involve football, so I'll start it off. All if right. you could could have played any other sport apart from football, what would it have been? Oh, I think I would have to be a surfer. <laughs> Definitely. Get to see amazing beaches and amazing locations. And you're in the water. Who doesn't love that? You obviously didn't get that love for surfing from when you were a griffith, though. <laughs> yeah, no. I can get the quite the same. <laughs> Cool. If you were going to write an autobiography, what would it be called? Autobiography? Um, I'd probably keep it pretty simple. Probably just the day in the life of Eliza. Simple and easy. Yeah, good. Nice. Um, everyone has a go-to joke before I throw you under the bus. Do you have one? But Kyle's going to hit us off first. All right. That's good. <laughs> Let him go first. Oh, stitch me up. Um, knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Thank you. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> Terrible, mate. Awful. No. Okay, I think mine's slightly better than that, but I am <laughs> furthest from being funny. So, what do you call a uh, three legged donkey? Wonky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like you uh, if there was a penalty in the World Cup final, would you back yourself to take it? Do you like the God big no. moments? God, no. God, no. No, I've missed a few in my time and I think that scarred me for life. Fair enough. Uh, you had to put a five aside together of players that you've played with uh, who, would, who would be in your team and you can pick yourself if you want. Oh, um, I think I would have to go Carmelina Moscato. She's part of the Canadian national team, played with her at Wanderers and she's just a phenomenal person and player. Um, Renee Rollison. Looked up to her growing up. Um, Say for Kylie Ledbrook, she's like kind of like the player I would always want to be, and she's just a freak. So I'd definitely have her. Um, Chloe Legazzo, great player, and um, probably Keelan Winters. So yeah, cool. that would probably be my five. Good team. You on the bench or are you coaching? Oh, I'm in the grandstand. grandstand. <laughs> <laughs> Um, have you been involved in football for most of your life? Has it brought any everyday life qualities to you, do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's really taught me how to make friends and just adapt to different situations because um, you never know what life kind of throws at you and the same with soccer. So um, I think that would be a major one. And then discipline. So just having the discipline to get stuff done and have structure in your day to actually get it all done is probably one of the big, big things soccer has taught me. We're going right back to the start. What was your first club? First club was Ugali Football Club here in Griffith. Yeah. What was your experience like here in Griffith uh, growing up playing for Ugali? Did you play in a boys team or girls team or what was your journey in Griffith like? Um, I was never allowed to play um, with the boys, always part of girls teams. Um, but I loved it. I can't complain. Um, it was definitely different to um, other leagues I've obviously progressed to playing with, but I reckon it was a great base. I enjoyed it. I played with my friends. So what else could you ask for as a kid? Okay, good. Um, when you went to NYC with New South Wales Country, how important was it for you being able to, one, play for New South Wales Country and then obviously the tournament experience? Um, and I guess you're with a special group of players that uh, a lot have gone on to have some good success. Um, did you see any reasons for that being such a successful team? Or um... Um, There was one year in particular, the year that we won the whole tournament was probably the most special year, especially in my career. It's still one of the highlights of my career. Um, we just we not, didn't necessarily have the best players um, like Metro did where they just had stellar players. But I think we just all came together and played for each other for our past, all the travel that we did throughout the time. We just, I felt like we had a lot more to play for. And I think when we went out in the field, especially against Metro, we knew it was going to be a hard game. And I think Metro underestimated us a little bit. And so we came out there firing and we we're neck and neck to the last minute where we just snuck away with a goal. But I think that all came down to just heart. And I think we all played with heart. And I think that's what made our group so special is that we played for each other. 
yeah. not necessarily for that end result. Cool. And for, for, the, for you, in terms of the importance of playing, obviously at that level, the national titles, where do you think that helped further on in your, in your career, having been able to compete at that level? Um, so being competing at that level, it kind of got me recognised for the youth national teams and stuff like that, which was always uh, just great. Um, but I think it just kind of taught me how to, I don't know, utilise my opportunities, especially going away and doing stuff like that. You're always travelling and stuff like that. So you did have to make sacrifices for the travelling. So when you did travel, you worked your ass off on the field and you got the results. And I think that's what I loved about country camps, especially going away you with, it's kind of like a mini, mini sleepover with all your closest friends. You're there and like we travelled to Sydney a few times, Bathurst and Orange and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a little holiday with your best friends doing what you love. So I think that's kind of what I loved about New South Wales country the most. Cool. And do you think that sort of camp experience helped later on, obviously when you're going young with children, et cetera, um, would that would have any benefits to that kind of experience of being in a camp environment before you get thrown into the deep end of young children? Yeah, definitely. You kind of, you learn how to not rely on your parents being there and stuff like that. So I moved when I was away from my parents when I was 14. So I think the country camps kind of helped me move to Sydney um, and not get homesick because you kind of have to learn to adapt and stuff like that. So I think that's a major thing that came out of country camps was me adapting basically. I think Kyle might have to go on some camps for his fresh fit iron on his parents, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you speak about travel a lot there, Eliza. Was that something that um, affected you at all? Or it didn't worry you being able to sit in the car and then get out and play a game? Oh, it didn't bother me at all. It's kind of you sit in the car and you kind of get antsy to start moving. So as soon as I got out of the car, I was ready. I was ready to run. So that was I was pretty I was pretty all right with it, but you got some times where you, traveling does make you exhausted, and there's a few times that I've just hopped on the field and I running is the last thing I want to do, so it's it was kind of hard trying to find that balance because traveling to Wagga two hours for me isn't so bad, but traveling to Sydney and stuff like that six yeah. hour drive it it does take a toll on the body and um mostly your mental state more than anything you just get tired and stuff like that, so you got the pros and the cons about it, yeah. And obviously, at National Year Championships, you had a fantastic tournament yourself. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Jada was the goalkeeper of the tournament and you were the main player of the tournament as well. Was there a moment there you thought that this is a chance, I can make it somewhere? Um, yeah, I definitely didn't expect to receive that award. Um, I remember I was sitting next to Jada when I received it and they called out my name and I didn't even think twice that it was me and then Jada was just shaking me being like Eliza that's you get up get up get up <laughs> and so um yeah it was pretty good especially being with Jada like we're so close growing up and um especially going through like Wanderers together and um youth uh national teams together it was always good to have someone that you could just always that could relate to you country girl yeah being has done and been through the exact same situations of you had, that you have been through so it was good it was good being out with her Awesome. Moving on to your school experience with Hills, uh, any experiences or challenges there? I know 2014 was another good year at Hills with the championship, but anything that stands out with the experience at school? Oh, definitely. We had, we won the, um, the Bill Turner championship, which our school has never done in the, in the women's team. So that was good. And we won the um, open age. So we, we achieved a fair bit and, like, again, we didn't necessarily have the best players, but we played as a unit and played for each other, which then got us to these um, these uh, game-winning games. Um, it's like Westfields was always our biggest challenge. And um, so coming out against them, we knew we were kind of the underdogs and we somehow made, made, managed to clear them off the park, which is always great. So there were some, like, kind of, like, highlights of um of peels, but there's always challenges when it comes to living away from home, yeah. balancing friends, soccer, um, family life and stuff like that. It was always difficult, but after a while you learn to manage and you learn to prioritise and stuff like that. So there's always challenges, especially with schoolwork. Balancing schoolwork and soccer is always a difficult task. Um, 
but I had great teachers that accommodated really well for, for me, so I can't complain. Awesome. You've um, been a captain of, at a numerous different occasions. Um, has being a leader always come natural to you or did you have to kind of develop your game to allow that? Um, I think it's kind of been a natural thing for me, but I've always just learnt off people before me. So I've always taken the best out of what they've done and tried to include it into myself and the way I do things. So, yeah, I just... I feel like you can always work on yourself and it's one thing I do work on. I don't necessarily have to be the captain wearing the armband, but I know I like to be the voice on the field because I've always liked to have someone backing me up when I'm on the field. So I like to think other people like the same. Excellent. Uh, you mentioned you went with uh, Jada to Western Sydney Wanderers. How was that experience when you were there? I mean, obviously at Jada and then obviously Ellie was there when you were there as well. Yeah. Some other regional players. How was your experience? At the, at the Wanderers, and what was Norm Boardman really like as a coach? Normie, good old Normie. Now he's a great, he's a great bloke. Um, he's done a lot for me, and he gave me great opportunities. So definitely can't ask for anything um, else from him. Um, but Wanderers, it was a different experience because I was so young, and I don't think I was necessarily aware of how kind of intense it was. So it was a big, a bit of a culture shock, but. Um, I had great girls around me to help me out, so that was that made it a lot easier um, on me. But it was a bit difficult balancing that with soccer because uh, balancing, sorry, um, that with schoolwork because I went from training to school to training, and I didn't even have time to have a break. So it takes a toll on your body a little bit. But by the end of it, I was managing and I was performing, so I definitely um, was doing all right. Excellent. How would you sum up your debut? Obviously, a big game to make a debut. How was that experience? Um, yeah, it was um, it was in Adelaide, and um, I just remember Leah calling my name, being like, Eliza, let's go. And I was like, wait, now? Like, are you sure? And they were like, come on, like, warm up. So I warmed up, then got on the field, and the first touch of, my, of the ball, I broke my thumb. Some player smashed the ball into my thumb, and, and yeah, I broke it. So, um... But I had to keep playing because I wasn't going to waste my opportunity. So I was running around like crazy and in slight pain. But um, no, it was a great, it was a great opportunity, and I remember it very clearly that day. I'm sure, it'll be one you'll never forget. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Moving on from Western Sydney, obviously you got the chance to represent your country, the Young Matildas. How was that whole experience um, in obviously a national environment? Yeah, I think this was the first taste of like elite football that I received. So. You know, traveling overseas, you're in a you're in a pack of girls like um, uh, trying to do the same thing as you, trying to get that spot on the field. So I think it was good that we all we were all friends, but we also pushed each other really hard. And I think I love that most about being part of the national team. But um, no, it was great fun. I got to travel uh, around the world, got to hang out with amazing people. Um, so it was it definitely it was a great experience. Any key highlights of that experience? I know you scored a hat trick in a, a very big win, 20 0. How was that game? Yeah, that was an interesting game, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, probably scoring that my hat trick was probably one of the the biggest things because not many players can say they've done that for their national team. So um, yeah. Awesome achievement. What was what was different when you're in the national team setup? I mean, obviously you're you're back in, mainly in a camp environment for whenever you've come in, generally speaking. What was the main differences you found at the national team as opposed to, you know, MacArthur Rams, Western Sydney Wanderers, where training's more sp sporadic? What were some key differences um, you've sort of found there? Key differences is very structured. There is no, there's no slight shift in times or anything. It's this is what we do at this time, this time, this time. You wake up at this time. You go see your physio at this time. Um, your cover is at this time. And... Probably the biggest thing would be recovery, that the national team takes so much pride in recovery, which I think is a great, great thing, where my other teams, not so much. It was kind of like, do whatever you want after the game. So what about, uh, sorry? I think that was a key difference okay. between the two. What about um, video analysis? Was there some significant difference in the importance uh, of video analysis there or...? Yeah, definitely the national team, there's a lot more than um, other teams. But I feel like Australians, Australian um, soccer doesn't do video analysis as well as 
Americans. Like that was the biggest culture shock from when I moved to America was that they one whole session is full focused on just video analysis and then you have your own video analysis and stuff like that. So I think it was it was definitely a lot more um, involved in the national team, but compared to America, they kind of clean the plate with it. Excellent. Well, talking about your move to America, why Hawaii? How did that come about? Um, so I went overseas with the Australian schoolgirls and I got picked up by a fair few colleges. And I didn't know if I wanted to go to college at this point. I didn't know if I wanted to move away from my family or to a different country at this point. So I let a lot of opportunities slide because they all had a deadline. And, um, and I, I was kind of looking at Hawaii from the start being like, oh, okay, pretty awesome place to live. Why not? And their coach, um, their assistant coach, sorry, is a Australian. And um, I've played against her here in like Sydney in the M MPL. So she kind of was like Eliza. It's a great place, to, a great place to come. It's a great opportunity. Um, you're on a scholarship, so why not? And then time went by, and I was, and the offer was still there, so I just took it. So why not live in Hawaii? Yeah, why not? That's what I said to myself. <laughs> it's a college life like like it is on the American movies, or is it uh, a, a little different? Um, definitely more tame in, in my, in um, <laughs> Hawaii, in my college, definitely a lot more tame, but, um, yeah, soccer wise, it's, it's pretty much the same. What's the, uh, how would you describe the professionalism of the football environment at the college? It's definitely a huge difference compared to Australia. Um, they definitely take so much pride in their sport, not even just soccer, just all their sports. They take so much pride and there's a lot of money that goes into it. Um, so therefore we have excellent facilities. We have the best recovery uh, facilities that I've ever had um, and stuff like that. So I definitely think it's a lot more professional, especially when you travel, um, you get kind of treated like royalty. And when you go into hotels, they just, you know, like one time we all just got free um, free cookies with the Hawaii logo on it just because they were excited to have us in, in their hotel. So it's like stuff like that is a bit exciting and it's you can tell it's a bit of a difference compared to Australia. Cool. How many games do you generally play in the season? Um, I think we're on about 18 maybe. Okay. So we have like conference games where like our season games then we have a few exhibition games beforehand where we like travel around America and play. And how often would you be training in your college team? Oh, every day. Every day. Yeah, so it um, depends what time of the season it is. We train, maybe have two sessions a day or we have a session and then a, like a gym session or a fitness session. So it's um, just depending on the type, uh, the, type uh, the section of the season we're in and the preseason. So, yeah, it's basically every day. Okay. Excellent. So having done this now, would you consider this a good career path for Definitely. other players that would be looking at doing something in football? Definitely. Like I felt like in Sydney I was getting a bit stale. I was kind of going through the motions and Hawaii was like, especially just the college experience has been so good. And I, Hawaii soccer, I mean, um, American football and Australian football are very different. And so it was, it's good that I've I've now learned to adapt to both. So I take kind of like the best out of Australia and take the best out of Hawaii and then put it into my game. And I think my team has finally understood the way I play because it took them a while to figure out what I was doing on the field. But um, so now I think we have a good combination of both sides. So, yeah. So when you find some time to study, what are you studying when you're over there? Um, so I'm studying to become a, basically a high school teacher. So a science high school teacher. Um, so basically we have training extremely early in the morning. It's like 5.30 in the morning. Um, we finish by like eight, but then we quickly go get breakfast and then you're off to class and the rest of the day is you know, during, like you're in class or you're studying or you have tutors or something like that. So basically have the rest of the day to do everything, but the morning section is always full on. Have you always been a morning person or did that take something? No, really? everyone will tell you I am miserable in the morning. You don't talk to me before I have my morning coffee. Yeah, so, 5.30 training. 
Yeah, so it's definitely, definitely hard to wake up 5.30. But everyone knows, just wait till I step on the field and once I do that, you can talk to me. I love it. I know I've read a few reports from opposition saying that um, they identified you as a key midfielder who could change a game. Have you always been a midfielder? Or? Oh, yes, always. I've been too short to be in the back line and I never want to be in the back line. That's boring. <laughs> um, and I'm not fast enough to be a striker, so I've always been pushed into the middle, but I've... Um, I wouldn't have any other way. I love midfield. Number 10, though. I don't do defence. <laughs> um, your first first year, obviously, came away with a, a goal, the most assists for your team and the Newcomer Award. How would you sum up your first year over there? Um, it was definitely an experience, to say the least. I um, arrived in Hawaii three, game, three days before our first game. So... Um, I didn't even know the girls' names at this point. I didn't even know how, the way they played. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know much. So it was um, the first few weeks was definitely difficult to adapt and just to understand the way they play. Um, but after that, once they finally got to know who I am and once I got to know who they were, um, it kind of came uh, smooth sailing. So that's when I started to get a few assists, got that goal, and we made it to the Big West tournament, which is um, like the final four for our conference, which we've never done before. So it was just, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride, but it was definitely one I definitely enjoyed. Yep. So from everything you've told us so far, is there anything you'd change about your journey to where you are now? Um, I think every team and every decision I made has either taught me a lesson or give me an experience. So I definitely wouldn't change anything. Um, yeah, I wouldn't for, for not, not one thing. So you, you mentioned um, yeah, an enjoyable time in Griffith and obviously some coaches like Norm have been helpful. Who, who would you say uh, some of the people that would have helped you throughout your career and your journey? Are there as a mentor from a uh, older player experience, um, coaches that maybe went out of their way to help you a lot? Um, and I'm, I'm going to guess one of them is going to be your parents. Um, who, who's helped you along your journey in varying um, forms? There's definitely been a number of people that have contributed and I will be always forever thankful for, but um, definitely, obviously, my parents, they took time out of their day every Friday night to drive me to Wagga and especially parents, I... Um, like players I played with and their parents taking me and stuff like that, always be thankful for those for those people. But um, probably Andrew Mason would probably be my, I would dedicate my career to that man. He, um, he kind of convinced my parents to let me move to Sydney and um, play over there, which then led to me being picked in the national team and then me getting picked into the um, – uh, Australian schoolgirls and then stuff from that especially then I wouldn't definitely be sitting here talking about college if it wasn't for that man so he's been there since day one and I think he kind of set the foundations for the player I am so other coaches kind of refined me but Andrew definitely set their um set the foundations. Is there any players that you looked up to in when you were growing up either through the national youth teams or at Wanderers, is there any players that you modelled yourself on? Do you think I want to play like them or I like their attitude, etc.? Um, yeah, so definitely Kylie Ledbrook is the player that I I want to be her. Like the way she plays, I love it. Um, it's kind of like the way I play, so definitely her. Renee Rolson, um, I remember my very first W League game, got a photo with her and then a few years later I'm playing next to her in the midfield. So <laughs> that was – so she's always been – Someone I looked up to, um, but yeah, those two probably mainly. Or oh, Sally Shupart. Sally Shupart, great girl, great country girl. And um, yeah, when she was at Canberra, yep. yeah. Awesome. So obviously there's a lot of young footballers around the regional areas and, and in Griffith as well that would aspire to maybe get to a pathway that you've got to. What advice would you have for those young players coming through? Um, it would be definitely just have fun in what you're doing. That's kind of like the I preach that because there's been stages in my career where I've just I haven't been having fun, so therefore I'm not playing well, and that's what I was kind of like in Sydney um, a year ago when I took a step back and I reevaluated everything, and now I'm back and playing 
enjoyable, fun soccer. So I definitely would say just have fun. Yep. Good advice. Well, there's been plenty of campaigning recently and we're moving ever so closer to finding out. But what do you think a Women's World Cup would do for Australia? I was hoping it would be in America because that's where I would be. So, <laughs> but um, I think it would be great because it would bring a lot of exposure um, to the game if it was here in Australia because um, Australians love live, uh, like live sports. So I think a lot of people would go and watch these games, but I also think it would be huge exposure for like women's, women in sport in general and just to increase that and to make our name for ourselves being like we do belong in sport and I believe we perform better than the men half the time. So, uh, yeah, I reckon it would be great if it was here. And everyone loves Australia, so... It'll bring a lot of people over. Yeah, yeah. If we do get it, are you going to fly back over for that? Depends if I have school. If I have school, I can't. If not, I'll be over here. Don't you worry. Perfect. What's the next target in, in uh, your career short term? What, what's the ambitions going um, out of football? Probably just uh, these next three years I have left of college. I just want to perform and do and play my best and learn and all that kind of stuff so I can get kind of like drafted into the NWSL. I think that's kind of like my end goal would be the NWSL. And um, I've seen and I know players who've done it. And so I'm like, that's kind of like the goal in the meantime. And we have one common question we ask everyone who comes on and we get the same response most of the time saying we shouldn't compare them. But Messi and Ronaldo, which side are you on? Oh. Messi, hands down. Yeah, hands down. Excellent. He can shoot, he can score, and he his assists, oh, so that's what gets me. I don't like to score, I like to assist. So watching Messi is <laughs> is my fun, is my fun pastime. Good answer. Yeah, we like it. Awesome. Well, Eliza, um, firstly, thank you for joining us on the Regional Football Hub. Uh, it was great to go back and let everyone know your experiences growing up in a regional area and where you've got to now. So well done on your career so far. I'm sure there's plenty more to come and we wish you all the best with your goal to um, get to the NSL and we wish you all the best and um, thank you again. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Alex, thank you. Thanks, Eliza. No worries.